Hello, and welcome to the TI Precision Lab covering SAR ADC drive amplifier considerations when using instrumentation amplifiers. Overall, this video will cover how to design data converter drive circuits using instrumentation amplifiers. Specifically in this section, we will learn how to scale gain and offset control on instrumentation amplifiers. Furthermore, we will look at a software tool that verifies the linear operating range versus common mode voltage. An instrumentation amplifier, or INA, rejects the input signal's common mode voltage, takes the differential signal and amplifies it by a gain, and level shifts the output using a reference pin. Normally, INAs are optimized for DC precision and low noise. That is, the offset, offset drift, and bias current for the INA are usually low. Also, INAs often have low bandwidth, as they are intended to amplify slow-moving sensor outputs. Because the bandwidth is typically low, INAs are often not capable of directly driving a switched capacitor input, SAR ADC. However, they can drive the PGA input of high-voltage type SAR converters directly. This example shows how gain scaling can be done for a typical INA plus ADC example. The input signal in this example is plus minus 10 millivolts. The data converter has several ranges. In this case, we will choose plus or minus 10 volts and scale the INA output to match the ADC input range. The gain requirement can be calculated by taking the output range and dividing by the input range. In this case, the gain is 1000. The gain for most INAs can be set with an external resistor and the equation for the gain relationship is given in the datasheet. Using the equation from the INA 826 datasheet, we find the closest standard value resistor to be 49.9 ohms. The INA's output relationship is given by the equation V out equals gain times VN plus VREF. In this case, the input and output are both symmetrical so no offset shift is required. Plugging the values into the equation for a 10 millivolt full-scale input signal, you can see that the output is 10 volts as expected. In the earlier TI Precision Labs video titled Determining a SAR ADC's Linear Range When Using Operational Amplifiers, we looked at common mode and output swing limitations of op-amps. Instrumentation amplifiers are composed of multiple op-amps. This figure shows a common type of INA configuration. Each amplifier inside the INA has its own input and output swing limitations. These limitations combine into an overall common mode versus output swing limitation for the INA. The output swing limitations are a function of the input common mode, the gain, the power supplies, and the reference input. This relationship is complex and generally cannot be determined with a simple equation or datasheet parameter. In some cases, a datasheet diagram graphing common mode versus output swing can be used to understand this limitation. Here are examples from the INA 826 datasheet that graph the common mode versus output swing limitations. A key point in these type of plots is to understand that the output voltage is equal to the V diff multiplied by the gain. One limitation of these plots is that they are only valid under specific test conditions. For example, the plot on the left shows the common mode range versus output voltage for a 5 volt supply, a gain equal to 1, and two specific reference levels. On the next slide, we will introduce a software tool that generates this type of plot for any test condition. Here we show a calculator tool that allows you to confirm that the instrumentation amplifier will have a linear output swing for your configuration. First, select the amplifier. Second, enter the supplies, gain, and reference voltage, and press the Create Graph button. Third, enter the common mode voltage. 
Notice that the graph has common mode voltage on the vertical axis and V out on the horizontal axis. The selected common mode voltage shows up as a green horizontal line. The output swing limitations are the points where the green line intersects with the red and white plot. The actual minimum and maximum output swing numbers are displayed at the output of the min and max amplifier symbols. In this case, the output swing is negative 14.8 volts to positive 14.2 volts. This proves that our design will not have an output swing limitation as the output should range from negative 10 volts to positive 10 volts. It is highly recommended that you use this calculator after each INA design as output swing limitations are the most common problem in INA circuits. In this slide, we find INA component values for a very similar problem to the last one we looked at. The main difference is that the input signal of 1 millivolts to 21 millivolts is not symmetrical and we will have to apply an offset to translate the output to plus or minus 10 volts. Looking at the calculations, the gain is calculated by taking the change in output over the change in input. The gain set resistor is selected using the equation from the datasheet. We rearrange the Vout equation to solve for Vref and apply Vn equals negative 1 millivolts, Vout equals negative 10 volts, and gain equals 1000. The final result is that the reference voltage of negative 11 volts is required to shift the output to plus or minus 10 volts. This negative 11 volt reference is generated using a voltage divider and an amplifier buffer. It is very important to use a buffer because the input to the INA ref pin is low impedance and errors will occur if you directly connect the voltage divider to the ref input. Here we show an example of a circuit that violates the common mode limitations. The goal for this circuit is to translate a 0 volt to 10 millivolt input signal to a 0 volt to 10 volt output signal. The circuit is a high side current shunt monitor where the common mode voltage is very close to 12 volts. After inputting the supply voltages, gain, and reference voltage to the software tool, it creates the red and white common mode versus output plot shown. Adjusting the common mode to 12 volts shows that the common mode is limited to plus or minus 6.4 volts. Therefore, we cannot get 0 to 10 volts in this case, so a different amplifier or configuration will be required. Up to this point, we have shown the INA connected to a high voltage SAR input with an internal high speed buffer. These types of SAR converters are good for this type of application because instrumentation amplifiers are often limited in bandwidth. However, there may be cases where it is desirable to drive a switched capacitor SAR with a low bandwidth INA. For example, the cost or accuracy of the switched capacitor input may be an advantage. In these cases, the low bandwidth INA needs to be followed by a wide bandwidth buffer amplifier. The buffer is required to allow for internal settling of the sample and hold capacitor. Later, we will discuss how to properly select the buffer amplifier and external RC charge bucket filter to optimize settling. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching. Please try the quiz to check your understanding of this video's content.